Hi everyone, this is Anna from NurseStudy.net and today we're going to be discussing cystic fibrosis. This website is not intended to provide medical advice. The articles on this website are intended for entertainment or educational value only. While we strive to offer 100% accuracy, medical procedures are rapidly changing and laws vary greatly from location. Cystic fibrosis, otherwise known as CF, is a genetic disorder that primarily affects the lungs and the digestive system. CF involves a defective gene that triggers the body to secrete mucus via the exocrine glands. This causes digestive juices and sweat to be thick and sticky in consistency. This results in lung and pancreatic problems. CF has no cure and is progressive in nature, so the treatment is mostly focused on the control of symptoms and the prevention of infections and other complications. Some of the signs and symptoms of cystic fibrosis include a chronic productive cough and wheezing, nasal congestion and activity intolerance, Recurrent lung infections, recurrent sinusitis, greasy and foul stools, growth retardation in children, poor weight gain, chronic or severe constipation, which may cause rectal prolapse and intestinal blockage. Cystic fibrosis is caused by the mutation of the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductus regulator CFTR gene. This gene is associated with the change in the protein that is responsible for controlling the movement of salt to and from the cells. Cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disorder, meaning that the patient received one mutated gene from each parent. Usually, parents who are carriers do not have signs and symptoms for CF. With the increased level of salt in the sweat, Sticky and thick mucus in the respiratory, digestive, and reproductive organs can occur. Some risk factors for CF may also include family history of CF in Northern European people. Complications. Respiratory problems. CF can cause bronchiostasis, a long-term lung condition where there is scarring and whining of the bronchial tubes, causing difficulty breathing and productive cough with clear mucus. CF can also lead to chronic respiratory infections, as thick mucus can be a breeding ground for pathogens such as bacteria and fungi. Pneumonia, bronchitis, and sinusitis can be recurrent in patients with CF. Because of the chronic and recurrent nature of the infections, the bacteria may eventually become antibiotic resistant. Other respiratory issues include nasal polyps, acute exacerbation, pneumothorax, or even coughing up blood. The most common cause of death in CF patients is respiratory failure. Now we'll move on to digestive issues. Nutritional deficiency is common with CF patients due to the blockage of the tubes that connect the pancreas to the intestine. If the pancreatic enzymes cannot reach the intestines, this causes the proteins, fats, and vitamins to remain unabsorbed. This results in undernourishment and delayed growth in children, as well as weight loss and pancreatic inflammation. Patients with CF may also develop diabetes due to the inability of the insulin to travel from the pancreas due to the blocked tubes. Liver and gallbladder problems may also occur due to blockage and inflammation of the bile's passageway from these organs to the small intestine. Intestinal obstruction can also happen in CF patients. Infertility issues. Most men with CF are infertile because of the blockage of the vas deferens, but surgical procedures may help fix this reproductive problem. Women with CF may have reduced fertility, but some can still conceive and experience a successful pregnancy. Other complications can include dehydration and electrolyte imbalances, osteoporosis and arthritis, and mental health changes. Nursing tip. Remember that cystic fibrosis is an exocrine gland dysfunction, which affects the bronchi of the lungs are affected, leading to bronchial obstruction, causing chronic bronchial pneumonia, obstructive emphysema, and pneumothorax. Pancreatic ducts are affected by leading to malabsorption syndromes. The small intestine leads to intestinal obstructions in newborns. And finally, bile ducts leading to portal hypertension. Diagnosing 
cystic fibrosis. One of the things we can do is newborn screening. And this is a blood test that shows high levels of chemical immunoreactive tryptosinogen, also known as IRT, which indicates the need for a more confirmatory diagnosis of CF. A sweat test for infants aged two weeks old and above to check for salt levels in the sweat and genetic testing may also be done. A physical examination may also be done. So checking for the presence of nasal polyps or signs of any other lung problems. Imaging tests such as x-ray, MRI, and CT scans may also be done to help with the diagnosis. Treatments for cystic fibrosis. Medications. While there is no cure for cystic fibrosis, the treatment is usually focused on symptom control and infection prevention. Antibiotics may be given to treat recurrent lung infections. Mucolytics may be prescribed to thin out the mucus and help improve lung function. Bronchodilators can help with breathing problems by keeping the airway open. Anti-inflammatory drugs can be used to reduce swelling in the airways. Other symptom control medications include stool softeners, antacids, and diabetic medications as indicated. The doctor may also prescribe targeted medication called Tegafta, a combination of three drugs to target G mutations in CF for patients age 12 and older. Chest physical therapy, CPT, also known as airway clearance techniques. CPT can help loosen the thick mucus in the lungs, reduce inflammation in the airways, and lower the risk of pulmonary infections. Pulmonary rehabilitation. This is a long-term program that focuses on the improvement of CF patients' lung function, nutrition, and overall health. Surgical procedures. A CF patient who has developed severe pulmonary disorders or respiratory failure may require a lung transplant. Diet. CF patients are given a high calorie, high protein diet to meet energy and growth needs. Vitamins A, D, E, and K are needed to replace the deficiency of fat soluble vitamins. Deficiency of these vitamins can cause anemia, bleeding, and bruising. Nursing care plan. A sample nursing diagnosis would be impaired gas exchange related to airway and alveolar inflammation, secondary to cystic fibrosis as evidenced by shortness of breath, an oxygen saturation of 82%, restlessness, and reduced activity tolerance. A sample desired outcome would be the patient will demonstrate adequate oxygenation as evidenced by an oxygen saturation within the target range as set by the physician or respiratory team. An intervention would be assess the patient's vital signs, especially the respiratory rate and depth, auscultate the lungs and monitor for wheezing and other abnormal breath sounds. The rationale would be to create a baseline set of observations for the CF patient and to monitor any changes in the vital signs as the patient receives medical treatment. Another intervention would be monitor the color of the skin and the mucous membranes. The rationale for that would be peripheral cyanosis, which is the bluish discoloration of the skin, earlobes, nail beds, etc., may be evident with hypoxemia. Central cyanosis involving the mucosa may indicate further reduction of oxygen levels. Intervention. Encourage the patient to cough to expectorate thick sputum. Suction is needed. Rationale. Impaired small airways experience impaired gas exchange primarily due to thick, tenacious mucoid secretions. The patient may be unable to cough the phlegm. Therefore, suctioning may be required. Intervention. Reposition the patient by elevating the head of the bed and encouraging him or her to sit in an upright position. Encourage purse-lip breathing and deep breathing exercises. Rationale. To improve the delivery of oxygen in the airways and to reduce shortness of breath and risk for airway collapse. This has been Nurse Anna from NurseStudy.net. I hope that you found the presentation on cystic fibrosis helpful. There are many more care plans, interventions, and diagnosis on pathophysiology over at NurseStudy.net. Thanks for listening.